Hi and welcome. Big Wednesday, carnage at Hartlepool. Two to three foot surf forecast would ease me back into surfing after my back operation. But would a dodgy forecast end in carnage? A great catch up chat as we paddled from Hartlepool to Seton Carew for our surf spot across the bay. Nearing Seton Carew at high water, we could see the surf line stacking up with the breaking waves running in and hitting the breakwater on the seafront. The surf was obviously much bigger than forecast. A couple of short runs as I worked my way to the beach away from the breakwater. I wasn't keen to surf the bigger ones just yet after a long layoff, so I opted for the smaller ones which weren't as steep but harder to catch and also put me in the break line of the bigger sets. Totally out of condition and practice on seeing a big one building I hesitated instead of punching out, but I'd also seen more behind and would have probably got trashed anyway, so I opted to take the huge rodeo ride towards the beach. The ride in at one point had me lying across the back deck sculling for support. Now for the resulting carnage, as I waited in the mush of broken water for the slightest sign of the set subsiding only to get continually pummeled by the power of each wave. The long paddle distance between each wave would put you under the crest by the time you'd arrived. As I climbed over the top of each wave, I could see a wall of water stacking up ready to break further out. There was just no sign of this slackening off at all. Despite wading in the mush of broken waves and scanning further down the coast for a quieter edge to the surf line, there was nothing, just some walls of water closing out full length. No! Thwarted again despite making up a great deal of ground. I was now right in the break zone of the waves that just reared up from nowhere. Something miles offshore was producing this relentless pulsing effect on the North Sea. The power from the last wave had dislodged a spare paddle, but no time to deal with it before the next wall was on top of me. Normally my spare paddles stay securely attached to the deck through any surf launch. 
Dead in the water, I flailed around frantically trying to stow the paddle before the next one hit. Still faffing with the paddle, I'd left it too late to produce any forward momentum before being slapped in the chest, which without getting a powerful punch in and holding it, I'd have been surfing backwards or reverse looped had I been square on. This constant battle was just crazy. Where was it all coming from and when would it subside? I had no choice but to keep plugging away until I'd made it out beyond its grasp. The carnage continued for a further 10 minutes or more, but seemed like a lifetime, until finally things started to subside allowing me to exit beyond the brake line. Once I'd regained my freedom, I rejoined the group where we all paddled back to our launch point at Hartlepool. On our return to Hartlepool, Felix, known as Tarka the Otter, initiated a rolling session where we all joined in for a little overdue practice. I'm totally convinced Tarka has developed gills. An excellent smooth roll from Wayne. It must be at least a year and a half or more since I last rolled my boat, and exactly 15 weeks since having my spine fused. It was finally time to give it a go. <laughs> a poor rule as far as I was concerned but at least it was still there and after the workout my back had received earlier I knew the screws were still holding fast vertical paddle I can't get the sweep round between the shoulders there If you've enjoyed being along with me on my sea kayaking adventures, click on the thumbnails for recommendations from my channel and other great videos. Please like, consider subscribing and share with friends. Thanks for watching.